Chapter 16, <coughs> we are going to talk about aromatic compounds. Uh, and then in chapter 17, we actually talk about reactions with aromatic compounds. This chapter is more about what makes a compound aromatic, what they are, a little bit of naming, um, but then chemical reactivity and the reactions that you can do with them will be the next chapter. All right, the first thing is that um, <laughs> the, uh, um, a benzene ring was first proposed by Kekulé um, back in the 1800s. Um, they found that this particular compound had special reactivity as well as the bond angles and the bond lengths. So there was something special about this compound. They found that the bonds were shorter um, and it didn't do the same type of chemical reactivity that other compounds with a double bond did. So based on a lot of this and a lot of experimentation they came up with the structure that you see of a benzene ring but it's called a Kekulé structure. Um, aromatic rings have resonance all right um, the pi bonds can resonate around so you can have this pi bond come to here which then kicks this pi bond to over there which kicks that one to over there to give you this structure <coughs> um, which is the same structure as this one it's just your pi bonds are in a different spot so kind of as a uh, shorthand or as a uh, they call it a combined representation would be something like this where you have a circle in between them the, uh, also I mean again these um, slides are from the publisher so they are giving you like bond links normal um, you know a sigma bond right here would be about a 1.43 angstroms but uh, it's showing that all of the bond uh, lengths are uh, a little bit less than 1.4 okay so like here showing you that you know single bonds 148 double bonds 134 these are right in the middle in between if you take 134 and 1.48 uh, and average it you'll get one you know about 1.39 um, so it kind of shows you that that's the bond lengths so benzene is actually a resonance hybrid between the two Kekulé structures okay so it's really so like benzene is not this structure nor is it this structure it's the combined structure so that's technically what it is okay um, the CC bond lengths of benzene are shorter than typical single bonds yet longer than a typical um, alkene or a double bond right and then the resonance can be represented by a drawing of a circle inside of a six membered ring okay so what makes the resonance what makes it so special um, so you can see here uh, your carbon on benzene are all sp2 hybridized and you have p orbitals that are all parallel to each other so the electrons inside of them are actually being shared throughout all the p orbitals okay on top and bottom it's kinda like a um, like a wire or a circuit an electrical circuit you have electrons that are actually able to resonate all the way around the whole molecule okay and that's what makes that's one of the things or a major thing that makes a compound uh, an aromatic compound is this resonance okay so each sp2 hybridized carbon in the ring has an unhybridized p orbital so you have your p orbitals perpendicular to the ring but they're parallel to each other and it overlaps in the ring so the six pi electrons are delocalized over the six carbons All right. Um, the other thing that uh, you need to know is why is aromat why is there a chapter on ar aromatic compounds? What makes them special? Um, if you were to just take this compound and just add bromine to it, like what we've learned in a different chapter, it doesn't do anything. There's no reaction. If you did it on a normal like double bond, we learned that if you, if you take a double bond plus bromine, all right, you get the uh, bromonium ion formation and you get trans dibromination that's the product okay so that's what you would expect in a case like this well you don't get that you actually don't get a reaction see that um, that's kind of what you would expect to be formed but if you what you need to do is since aromatic compounds are more stable you have to add catalyst to it this iron bromide is a catalyst again this is a re reactivity of aromatics we'll talk about this more in chapter 7 I'm sorry chapter 17 but if you were to add bromine and iron bromide, you actually just get one bromine on the aromatic compound. 
and it keeps the pi bond. It doesn't get rid of the pi bond. That this is what you would expect based off of what we learned in another chapter, but that's not what you get. Okay, so in bromine adds to bo uh, benzene a catalyst such as iron bromide is needed. The reaction occur uh, the reaction that occurs is a substitution. It's not an addition reaction, and the addition of bromine to a double bond is not observed. So you get unusual reactivity. You don't get the typical reactivity you do with double bonds, hence aromatic reactions. All right, another name are annuals. Annuals, instead of saying aromatic or like benzene, an annual is basically these types of compounds where they're all carbons, okay, and they, they alternate double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond. So these are conjugated systems. These have to be conjugated. So we learned about conjugation last chapter. Um, we're extending it into this chapter, but it's conjugated within a cyclical structure. That's what's making it special. If you just had a straight chain, it's not considered an annual or an aromatic compound because it's a straight chain. It doesn't keep going in a circle. The whole point is that the pi electrons go around and around and around and around. Okay, so an annual is just any carbon-hydrogen ring that is conjugated. All right, so it's called a four annual because there's four carbons, six carbons, six annual, eight annual, ten annual, and so forth and so on. So annuals are hydrocarbons with alternating single and double bonds. Benzene is a six-membered annual, so it can be named six annual. Cyclobutadiene is a four annual, and so forth and so on. All right, um, failures of their resonance picture. Let me bring the words up here. Okay, so um, a cyclical conjugated hydrocarbon are proposed to be aromatic. All right. However, not all cyclical conjugated systems are considered aromatic. You don't always have a resonance. Okay, so in cyclobutadiene is actually reactive like a typical alkene. It does not have so your your benzene is what's considered aromatic. Just because you have a cyclical, uh, an annual, doesn't mean that it's aromatic. Okay, this compound, it does not re resonate around. Okay, uh, the reason is because these pi bonds are are really not parallel. You kind of have a kink in this. Okay, um, it's telling you here that the cycloocta uh, tetraene adds bromine like a double bond because it's not aromatic. So these two compounds are not aromatic or not considered what's called aromatic. Just because you have a cyclical um, conjugate system doesn't mean it's aromatic. There are special rules for aromaticity that we're going to learn in this chapter. So this is kind of the first slide to let you know that not all annuals are aromatic. Okay, These two cases, they are not aromatic. These do not resonate around. Th this pi bond does not go there and go there to form that compound. Okay, these pi bonds don't r r resonate around and form this. This does because there are certain rules. A few of them will learn that, but some of them one is that the compound has to be planar so that your pi bonds are parallel. Okay, um, uh, there's also something called Huckel's rule is what we'll talk about too. It's got to follow a specific uh, equation in Huckel's rule and it'll be considered aromatic. Okay, so we're going to skip uh, 16.3 and 4. They start talking about orbital pictures and how your pi bonds and anti-bonding orbitals. Uh, there's no reason in order to go over that. That's way more information than what we need to know. If you're interested, you can read it on your own. Okay, so 16.5, aromatic requirements. What makes something aromatic? Okay, there's a bunch of rules. One of them is that the structure must be cyclical with conjugated pi bonds or a cyclical compound and conjugated. So an annual, okay, you have to have that, okay? You also have to have that every carbon or atom, it doesn't necessarily have to be a carbon. We will learn that you don't have to have carbons, but for right now, let's just talk about the annuals, which are all carbons. Each atom in the ring must have an unhybridized p orbital. So y they have to be sp2 or sp hybridized, all your carbons. The p orbitals must overlap continuously around the ring. So that th this implies that the structure must be planar okay uh, or close to planar in order to have an effective overlap it's this overlap that you need if your compound is not cyclical if it's kinked then you're not going to have the overlap and you don't have the aromaticity like we saw in the eight membered ring on the previous slide all right uh, and the other thing is that the uh, pi electrons must be delocalized around the whole entire ring in order to be low in energy 
So these are things that you must have. One, it's got to be cyclical, and you have to have um, sp2 or sp hybridized carbons. Your pi bonds must overlap each other, so your molecule must be planar. Okay, if you have those criteria, then um, there's a good chance your compound is aromatic. Here's examples of non-aromatic compounds. Okay, uh, this is not conjugated. I'm sorry, it's not conjugated all the way around the, the molecule. Okay, sure you're conjugated here, but the whole molecule has to be conjugated. Also, notice these are sp3 hybridized. Okay, they are not sp2 hybridized. So that's a non-aromatic compound. Okay, so here just basically explains everything I just said. Non-aromatic compounds do not have a continuous ring of overlapping p orbitals. And also this compound isn't planar, but if we don't even get past the overlapping p orbital part, then there's no reason to even talk about the planarity. Okay, you also have types of compounds which are called anti-aromatic compounds. So there are three types of compounds that we're going to talk about in this chapter. One, it's non-aromatic. So if it doesn't follow any of those previous rules, meaning it's a cyclical structure, it's conjugated, and it's planar. Okay. If it is cyclical, conjugated, and planar, it could either be aromatic or it can be anti-aromatic. Okay. Uh, anti-aromatic is a little bit higher in energy than aromatic compounds. We will talk again. We'll talk about the, the, the difference, but these slides are just to introduce you to it. This is an example. So this follows those rules. It's planar. Okay. So here are the three things it, it has to follow. One, it's got to be planar. Okay. Two, it's got to be conjugated. And three, it's got to be cyclical. Okay. Uh, not necessarily in that order. It just has to be all three of them. It's got to be cyclical. It's got to be planar. It's got to be conjugated. All right. So this is follows all three of these. It is planar. Okay. It is conjugated, and it is a cyclical structure. However, it's what's called anti-aromatic, which is a fourth thing we're going to learn about, which is Huckel's rule. Depending on how it follows in Huckel's rule, this is what's called anti-aromatic. Okay. So the previous slide, it was a non-aromatic compound because it didn't follow any of these things. If it follows these three, it, has, it can either be aromatic or anti-aromatic. We will learn what makes something aromatic and anti-aromatic. So here, anti-aromatic compounds are, are cyclical, um, are conjugated with overlapping p orbitals in a ring, uh, but electrons do not delocalize, okay? And we are going to see why that happens. All right? So uh, we're going to end this, the, uh, this particular um, slide right here so we can spend much more time on Huckel's rule.